Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer 30 days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer 10 questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com. Hi there, a very warm welcome to the Racing Post Weekend Postcast. I'm Bruce Millington and joining me to look ahead to a fantastic weekend are Stuart Riley and David Jennings from the Racing Post and Frank the Tank Hickey from Paddy Power, a top team and a top weekend of action to get stuck into. Stuart is back from Australia where he has spent about five weeks covering the Spring Carnival, so to get his head around the fact that we're back with jumps and it's rainy and all that sort of thing. DJ's back from his stag weekend. Did you get back in one piece, DJ? Yeah, just about, yeah. We had a projectile vomiting incident on Friday night, but Saturday was relatively stress-free and uh, it just Cheltenham, them. Best place to go for a stag in the world. Do we want to uh, elaborate on the projectile vomiting incident? Was it funny or just disgusting? Uh, no, it was actually fine. It was at the end of the night, but my, my mates decided to do this thing, you know, like a team sheet. So in, in Gaelic football, there's like 15 positions. And instead of positions for players, they had a shot. So I got to about number 12, which was like tequila or Sambuca. And that was just lights out. Ooh, but I dear. gave it a good shot. Okay. Excuse All right, the pun. No. Hmm. Frank, you well? I haven't done a postcast with you for ages. How's your punting? Yeah, uh, all right. Uh, nothing spectacular in there. Just kind of going about my business. But um, last weekend was tough. I backed two anti-posts for the two big handicaps at Cheltenham. And one was Bennett Harrow who came out in the morning of the race. And the other wasn't declared for the Greatwood. But we'll come to that later. Oh, dear. And how are confidence levels for this week, Frank? Um, I have a rampy one, all right. That's what we like to hear. Stewie, you in good form? Yeah, very good, thanks. Good, excited? Yeah, very excited. It's nice to be back and it's uh, good racing to get stuck into. Certainly is. So let's get stuck in then. We've got Haydock and Ascot on ITV. Loads of other stuff on Saturday and then on Sunday, the Troy Town with Gordon Elliott with about a zillion runners, plus some decent fare down at Exeter as well. But without further ado, at Haydock at three o'clock is the big race of the weekend and indeed of the jump season so far. The Betfair Chase. Three miles, one and a half furlongs, and the five names that Frank is going to read out when he gives us Paddy Power's show of betting will illustrate just what a cracking contest this is. Take it away, Frank. Yeah, Might Bite is even money. Native River, 5-2. to two. Bristol to my 11-2. Thistlecrack, 8-1. to one. And Clanders of Boat is 10-1. to one. Wow, wow, wow. Behind Stuart, you will see a picture of Might Bite and Native River duelling it out last year. A fantastic race. Stu, you go first. Who wins? I think Native River wins it. Yeah, I was surprised when I looked at the betting, Stu, why there's such a difference. Yeah, I think Sounds that, like you are as well. That's what swayed me towards Native River at the prices. I just, I have to go that way. Um, he got the better of him in the Gold Cup. He won that battle fair and square. Mike Bike came there travelling. I thought he was going to go past. I thought he was the better horse. He just didn't prove to be. I know this is a slightly different test, but... I think Native River impressed me twice last year. On his comeback at Newbury, he showed a lot more speed than I thought he had, and I don't think I don't think he'll be a walkover here. So I, I think he's the one they have to be, and I'm surprised he's as big as he is. It's an at the prices job, is it, Stu? I think so, yeah. DJ, uh, no, I'm the complete opposite, Bruce. I think this is as close to a good thing as you're going to get in Mike Bite. Uh, the key thing here to remember is that it's a completely different race to the Gold Cup. Different track, different trip. I just thought in the Gold Cup, Nico was just trying to hang on to Mike Bite for as long as he could. Obviously, stamina, as we know, was the big issue with Mike Bite going in. Would he get up the hill over that trip? And Nico was just trying to hold on and hold on for as long as he could, trying to hit the last and hit the front on the run in. I think you'll see completely different tactics on Mike Bite. Mike Bite, the real Mike Bite, does what he did in the King George, what he's done throughout his chasing career. He breaks the hearts of horses early, earlier on in races, halfway through the race. I could see him even picking it up down the back tomorrow, and I think I think he could I think he could gallop them into submission, turn into the home straight. I think this is perfect for Mike Bite. The ground, the track, the trip. I think he, uh, uh, with the, all those things taken into consideration, I think he's by far the best horse in the race. And uh, I just think these are his terms and conditions, and I think he'll win comfortably. How many lengths will he win by, DJ? Yeah, I'd be advising people to get involved in the overs, uh, whatever the overs are with different firms. I'm sure you get about three or four to one from to win by, you know, over four lengths or more, because there's only five runners. They're likely, they're not going to finish in a line. It's their first run of the season. Some are fitter, some some are fitter than others. And I just thought Nicky Henderson's comments recently are really, really kind of refreshing to hear. He's comparing him to Sprinter Sacra, who's the best horse I've ever seen in my lifetime. So, uh 
yeah, it's it's a big shout out to Mike White. I don't like tipping favourites in these big races, but I just don't see how he's going to get beaten. DJ's incredible, isn't he? I said, how how many lengths is he going to win by? He didn't say the number, but he went on for about another eight minutes. Absolutely superb. Well played, DJ. Frank, what do you think will happen? Yeah, I very much echo what uh, David has said there. I think Mike Bice, the two furlong sorter trip, the slightly sh the, the sharper track, um, the ground is more in his favour. Like Native River ground out that Gold Cup, he's like his stamina was never in question. He's won a Welsh national. Mike Bice, like he, probably his best performances have come at Kempton, which. Look, I won't say it's the same as Haydock, but it's similarities only going the other way around. Like you have to think back as a chaser since he was beaten on his debut of Foss last was this, was that his debut of Foss last? Since then anyway, mm. he's only been beaten twice in the Feltham at Kempton when he was gonna win by half the track and in last year's Gold Cup. He's just a really talented horse. He's a bit quirky, but to be fair to him last year, like you couldn't question his attitude. He did everything right all year, so um I just think tomorrow, as David said, everything's in his favour and I'd be very surprised if he's beaten. Right, let's get the one, two, three, four, five. Stu, away you go. I'll go Native River, Might Bite, Clan de Zobo, Thistlecrack, Bristol to my. DJ? Uh, I love this question. Uh, I'm going to go uh, Might Bite, Bristol to my, Native River, Clan de Zobo, and Thistlecrack. And Frank? Um, might Bite, Native River, Clan de Zobo, Thistlecrack, Bristol to my. Okay, a fantastic race. Really looking forward to that. And by the way, if you want 50 to 1 might buy it, if you're a new Paddy Power customer, you can. You're obviously not going to be allowed £1,000, but it's a decent offer. If you want to take advantage of it, please do head to racingpost.com slash free bets. Right then, let's take the other Haydock ITV races, starting with 150. It's the Betfair Best Odds on ITV Races Handicap Hurdle, two mile, three furlongs. Frank, how do Paddy Power bet on this one? Yeah, Black Mischief is 7-2, Sears Darris 9-2, Admiral Baldry 6-1, Cliffs of Dover 13-2, Mr Antonini 7-1, Chittabello 8-1 and we're 10's bar. We've got to watch our bets, we've got Chittabello and who's the other one who sounds like that? I can't uh, think. Chittibalco. Chittibalco, yeah, so watch your bets. DJ, who wins? Um, I'm a bit scared because this is one of my strongest fancies of the day and I'm clashing with Frank Hickey who's going to give it the, the heave-ho in a minute with a different horse. But uh, I really like Sayur Astarius here in his first start for uh, Colin Tizar. He's had a wind up and um, you know he just goes so well fresh. He's won after a 235-day break. He's won after a 167-day break. He's won after a 111-day break. He just goes so well fresh. Listening to Colin Tizard's comments in his stable tour, he thinks he's a proper grade one chaser. It's interesting that this is a starting point. I think Haydock is the perfect track for him. I just go back to the day Don Cossack won the Melling Chase at, uh, at Aintree. I was actually there on a different stag, and he won the Novice Hurdle that day to grade two, and he was brilliant. I think flat track, good ground, I think everything is in his favour here. He's changed from the Jeffersons to um, Colin Tizard. And I would be hugely excited about him and would pot potentially be putting him up as my nap of the day. Only for Frank Hickey, it's about to cut loose. How do you know? You're not allowed to discuss each other's tips before we come on air, DJ. That's not uh, fair. He mate. told me two minutes before I came on okay, and now I'm demoralised. Fair enough. Okay then, so DJ really likes Cyrus Darius, but it sounds like Frank has got another strong fancy. What is it, Frank? Yeah, I was uh, burnt badly in an anti-post bet. I was um, very sweet on Mr. Antolini for the Great Wood, and I had been uh, piling into that every week since he ran uh, at Cheltenham on his comeback. And, uh, of course, he wasn't declared, and I was gutted. I thought he must have had an issue, but he was entered up on this Monday, so I waited to see if he's declared, and he has been. Now, when I can see where David's coming on from with Sirius Darris going to Colin Tizzer, but he actually is disappointed in his two runs at Haydock, albeit in graded company and in a, I think it was a graduation chase there last year. But when you look at Mr. Antolini, he's only had five runs for Nigel Twist and Davis. He was with Gar Power in Ireland. He run well there, he'd shown promise, but he really took off when he, he went to Twist and Davis. Um, he won a Leicester handicap of 119, a low enough start. He was second to Huntington, but then he went to the Imperial Cup. I urge anyone who didn't watch that race or can't remember to go back and watch it and watch how he travels through the race. He literally tanks through it the whole way. Um, it's incredible that he found so much afterwards. But when you see what he's beaten and how the race has worked out, out that's when I get excited. Now, the second that day, Call Me Lord, they pulled nine lengths clear, clear the third. Call Me Lord won a grade two at Sandown after that beating the lights of uh, Little Rockefeller, Old Guard, 
and Holstone. He hammered them that day. The third What's Wrong With You hasn't run since. Huntman's son was second to Kalashnikov in a beginner's chase up in um, Warwick. Man of Plenty was second in a Punchtown handicap at the festival. Silver Streak won the Swinton. The Welsh champion hurdle was touched off in the Greatwood. He is now £12 higher before getting reassessed for his grade. Great would run. Fiddocks was seventh. He's won two handicaps this season, eleven pounds higher. Um, Highway 101 um, was second in the handicap at Sandown or ke- at Sandown, and over hurdles has won two over out of three over fences. Uh, the likes of Lepatriot was pulled up in that race. He won an air handicap. And when you look, Mr. Anthony is only eight pounds higher than that. If you go to his reappearance run at Cheltenham over two miles five, he travels like the best horse in the race. He absolutely tanks through it. Now, I thought I was really telling in the Racing Post um, stable tour with Sam Twist and Davis. When he got to Mr. Antonini, he said that he had been sick prior to that and had missed some work and badly needed it. Now, for him to travel like that over two miles five, and he was coming to last hurdle, you're sure he's going to win. He kind of weakens out in it from there. But first assignment won the race, who's a sharp price favourite to win the big handicap, the valuable handicap at Haydock tomorrow. The fourth, Lungarno Palace, was third to Speed O' Boy, who was a handicap blot at Cheltenham last year. The fact this is only eight pounds higher is, is, is nearly criminal. He's a massive each way chance. I think he's a massive... I'm going to get rightly stuck in. Like There's always a chance one's well handicapped against him, but I really, really fancy him. Apart from that, why else do you fancy him, Frank? <laughs> that was compelling. That was beautiful. That was compelling. Blimey, follow that, Stu. Yeah, I can't. I actually wrote down for this race that I don't really fancy much, but now I do. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. That was one of those great Frank Hickey, I'm going to grind you into backing this horse, and uh, I will (laughs) certainly do it. I might have a little saver there, though, DJ. You were very compelling as well. I wouldn't. To be honest, Bruce, I wouldn't bother. (laughs) Or the forecast. Oh, it's great to have you back on, Frank. The 225, the Betfair Exchange, Stayers Handicap Hurdle, and we've got an exciting favourite here, Frank. Yeah, first assignment is looking to back up Cheltenham, the Cheltenham win last week. He's 6-5. to five. Paisley Park is 9-2. to two. Captain Collistock's 5-1. to one. Falls in blue at 13-2. to two. Theo's Charm is 8-1. to one. Bobo Mac, 9-1. to one. And we're 20s bar. Are you going to take the jolly on, Frank? Um, on what he did last week, it would be very difficult to take him on. He won like a really good horse. And there's a race run every year at Sandown called the EBF Final. It's always a great point for the future. Like, really good horses have have won or ran well in it like Manila Awards won a couple of years ago Many Clouds won it a few years back this th- first assignment was third in it um, he's really improving now the only issue with him would be if you look at the quotes after the race Ian Williams is saying that he's not the most robust horse and it would just be in the back of your mind if you're backing something at 6-5 to 5-4 five, five to four, and you're not sure how he's going to come out of the race like obviously they think he's fine because they're running him but it is a bit of a fact finding mission running him so quickly it's probably not the greatest thing to be back on horses like that. Um, if I had to take a flyer on one at a price, um, I might chance Bobo Mac each way if I was having a bet. He was second um, at Newbury last time to Jersey Bean, who was an impressive enough winner, and he was second yesterday at Mark Ray's and off a higher mark. That Bobo Mac was having his first start after a wind up. Um, he seemed to really appreciate that. So, as, a, as an each way bet, I might have a few quid on him, but um, it's a difficult one with that fav. He'd probably win, but not knowing how robust he is, yeah. He okay. Be into him. Jolly good. Stu, what's your approach to this one going to be? I think this is <coughs> probably one of the worst editions of this race that's been in a while. There's been a lot of very good horses come out of this race. It's a race I always look forward to. I was really excited looking down the uh, the five-day uh, entries and the final field. is It's a little bit disappointing. Um, I think first assignment is probably the horse to be with here, provided he's come out of the race, as, uh, as Frank hinted at. There's only two horses in this race that are even priced up for the stayers hurdle right now. Paisley Park, who's the top weight, is the other one. Uh, he's around a 33 to one shot for the stayers. First assignment's a 40 to one shot, and he's getting 12 pounds from him. I mean, realistically, uh, at, at the weights, he's, he should be very hard to beat. He's very well in on the official handicap as well. Um, one horse caught my eye, Shades of Midnight. He's well treated. There's a piece of back form he has with Sil Soul on the best ground he's ever encountered. Uh, it was good soft that day. It, it, most of his racing's been on heavy, and you think of him as a heavy ground horse. That was actually his best piece of form. It was really good run right behind Sil Soul, who's a very good horse to be up to this sort of grade. He's dropped down the handicap at a price. He's one that I like. Okay, and DJ? Um, a couple of interesting things here, Bruce. I'll be as quick as I can. Uh, I play a good bit of golf with Gary O'Brien from At The Races, and uh, he's the owner of this core partnership of False and Blue. 
And I played golf with him a good few weeks ago now. I don't know how, how long ago it was. But uh, but I said, what's the plan for False and Blue? He was very unlucky in last year's Irish Grand National. And he goes, oh, we're going to go for the hurdle race in, in Haydock on Betfair Chase Day. And I said, oh, that's the fixed brush hurdle. He goes, no, no, no. It's not the fixed brush hurdle anymore. It's the Bet- Betfair Exchange Stairs hurdle. It seemed to me that this has been the plan ever since the, uh, the Grand National. Such an unlucky run there. He is much lower over hurdles as he is than he is over fences. He's one four two over fences. He's one two eight in Ireland over hurdles. He's four pound higher in England, but he goes really well fresh. And it's very interesting that it, this is the race that they've pinpointed to try and exploit that hurdle mark. I think Haydock will suit him. Um, Richard Johnson has been booked to ride. The race is cut up a little bit. I think that's fine for him. Um, you know, he's fairly straightforward. He's an easy ride. Rich, um, I just think the favourite is going to be hard to beat. But the fact that this he's been laid out for this race, he goes well fresh. I just think he's at the prices. He's the one in the race that's overpriced, False and Blue. OK, I thought you said there were two interesting things. Was there another one? Uh, no, that's it. OK, jolly good. That was <coughs> interesting, though. Did you win? Did you beat him at golf? Uh, yeah, I, I'd be. I, he's like obviously a far better tipster than me and a far better presenter, but I'm a better golfer. So there Jolly you go. Jolly good. That's the main thing. Three thirty-five. Better value on the Betfair Exchange handicap chase. Three miles of furlong and a half. Only six runners, Frank. A disappointing field in terms of numbers, but an interesting betting heat. How do you bet? Yeah, Captain Redbeard's just favourite at nine to four. Vintage Clouds five to two. Bracker Door hundred to thirty. Taking Risk thirteen to two. Bywise nine to one. And Delusion of Grandeur is ten to one. I've just about got out of the habit of backing Bywise, Stu. So who should I be backing here? I quite like Vintage Clouds here. Trevor Hemmings had four in here at the uh, at the entry stage. Um, he had um, Testify, that decent horse of, uh, of Donald McCain's in there. Uh, that was jocked up with, with Brian Hughes and I was gutted because I thought that meant he'd be going here and Vintage Clouds wouldn't. This is the sort of race that's been a real stepping stone for those sort of decent national horses. Um, a lot of them end up in the Grand National, but you know, they win races like the Midlands, like the like the Welsh. Uh, and I've I've long had vintage clouds down as that type. Um, the fact that he's going here, the small field will suit him. Yeah, everything seems to have lined up for him and uh, yeah, he's who I'm gonna be backing. Vintage clouds. DJ, have you stopped coughing? Yeah, I I've I've kind of a sore throat all week. But um I that's what happens when you go on stag weekends. That's just that's, I know, that's the least you get. Everyone comes back from a stag week. And don't you get that feeling of like absolute desolation as well when you when you come back and you just oh it's all over. Yeah, life is just over. Like Monday morning, I was in the absolute horrors. So a sore throat. I'm I'm pretty happy with that outcome to be honest. Good. Um, it's better than death. Well, um, yeah. But I'm devastated here because I think the best handicap chaser in Britain, if people want to put this into their trackers, it's a horse I'm so excited about going chasing this year. It's a horse called Duke de Champs that's trained by uh, Philip Hobbs. It was entered in this race and a race at Ascot. We only seen him twice over fences last season when Philip Hobbs' string were completely out of form. And I just was dying for him to run in this race. I thought it was the perfect race for him. And he's not running because the ground isn't soft enough. But I'd advise listeners... Duke de Champs, put him in your tracker. When this, we get a bit of rain, this is the best handicap chaser in Britain. As regards this race, I was throwing all my eggs into the one basket with Duke de Champs when I studied it during the week. Captain Redbeard deserves to be favoured. He's got good Haydock form. At the prices, he's no value, but I do think Captain Redbeard is the most likely winner. And Frank? Yeah, I'd be in the vintage clouds. Um fan club he's a horse I'm, I'm adamant will win one of the nationals in the next couple of years um i think he just missed out by one or two in the national last year uh, like his form is very consistent like he was um fourth in the welsh national when he was backed off the boards third in the ultima third in the scottish national he was second in a grade two up in was it Warwick or Weatherby to um, Bally Optic? He's just really consistent. Um, and you have to remember, on his reappearance last year at Aintree, he won by 17 lengths, so he obviously goes well fresh. So, for me, he's the one. Um, he just needs to get maybe £4 or £5 rise, and then they know they'll be guaranteed a run in the National in April. And uh, he's one to keep in side for the likes of that oh. later on the season. Excellent. OK, that was Haydock. Three good races at Ascot coming next. Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer 30 days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer 10 questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com. OK, welcome back. Let's look at Ascot. Three races on ITV. We'll start with the 205. It's the Christie 1965 chase. And good old Politilog heads the market. Frank, how short is he at the moment? 
Yeah, he's even money. Benatar is 3 to 1, Charbel 130, Gold Present 8 to 1, Hammersley Lake 20s, and Sizing Granite is 33 to 1. David Jennings, what do we do here? Oh, do you know what? I'm going to take on Politolog because I think obviously he's the best horse in the race, but there's just enough doubts to take him on. Um, I, I, I went through the race and I do like Politolog. He's not one of these horses that I always take on because I don't like him. I do like him as a horse. I just think. He, he, he's just going to struggle a little bit this season. I think he's going to be hard to place because I don't think he's a proper, proper, top, top-notch grade, uh, grade one horse. So for that reason, I'm going to take him on. And the horse I'm going to take him on with is Gold Present, who on the figures has £16 to find. But I just go back to that Silver Cup win um, last December at Ascot. He absolutely bolted up off a of mark of 147. It was a proper handicap as well. Froden was second. 007 was well beaten. Single farm payment was well beaten. And his jumping was absolutely spectacular. He's had a wind operation. And I think that's crucial because I do think he needed one. Um, around Ascot, where jumping is so paramount, I think he, if he gets into a good rhythm... Um, I think he could potentially win a race like this. I think races like this are going to be his bread and butter this year. I don't think they're going to go for the national because I don't think he stays. I think this trip is suitable. Um, and when you read Nicky Henderson's comments in a stable tour, he does think there's a proper, big, decent handicap in him. Perhaps it's a greater chase and perhaps it's this Ascot chase. I think this is here for the taking. And I think he's probably he's probably a little bit underestimated. I think 8-1 to one is a bit of value with Paddy Bear. Uh, Frank, you going to look beyond the fav here? I, I am... Um just about i think look he's obviously the most proven horse in the race um and his entry win was very good form but the one it's kind of a little bit of chasing money from last weekend i was on benatar at a price for the bet victor gold cup and i uh, was getting very excited when he was into a short of seven to one 13 to 2 and then i woke up to the bad news that he'd been pulled out and the stable mate goes and wins but he's two from two at ascot which is one thing now the one thing about him is he can be very free in his races and the last day at newton abbott was like even worse than ever he was very bad but if that's just knocked the freshness out from a little bit he's a huge chance here like if you go back to the jlt there's not many races have worked out much better than that like Shatter Love, who won, was second in the Grey One of Fairy House to Album Photo, second recently to Snow Falcon and Down Royal. Terra 4 was second, won a Grey One at Aintree. The Ford Kenboy won a Limerick Grade 3, a Punchtown Handicap in a procession off 147. And will win the Hennessy next choice. week. Potentially. Finian's Oscars was fifth, won a Grey One at Aintree. Big Marta was seventh, won an a grade two at air. Modus was eighth, won a Cheltenham handicap of 146. And even invitation only, he was pulled up, was third in a grade one at Fairy House and was still in contention with unseating at uh, two out at Punchtown in a grade one. So the form is incredibly strong and he's one that if he learns to settle, he's definitely got the potential to make up into a Ryanair horse before the year is out. Okay. Um, I'm going to chance him tomorrow. Okay. I must stop calling it the Hennessy. Stuart, who wins this? Um... I started at Benatar. He's a horse I absolutely love. I've been really impressed by him when he won at Ascot last year. Uh, I was worried by the small field, so I went and did a pace map for the race, and it scared the hell out of me because... Blimey, what does that consist of? Well, a scary pace map? Well, because you see what Frank was saying about how he really doesn't settle well. He needs a strong pace. He's, I don't see him getting one here. Unless Sam Twiston Davis kicks on on Politolog, which is a possibility, I think they're going to let... Uh, Gold present, have it his own way on the front and go whatever pace he likes. If he's got any sense, he'll slow it up from the front and you take one of your big rivals straight out of it. Um, so from that position, I just put me off him. I can't see him winning if they go a dawdle and I think that's what's likely to happen. So then I started looking for alternatives. Um, Hammersley Lake was the horse that really caught my eye. He had a run Two starts back, he gave five pounds and a five and three quarter length beating to Charbel, who's four to one. He and he's twenty to one, I think Frank said. He's a much, much bigger price. So that really caught my eye at the price. I was getting very excited, but obviously he went across to America. I'm not sure that's the ideal prep for this. And so I have landed on the same horse as David. Uh, Gold Present is the one that I've ended up falling upon because I think he is going to get his way in front. Um, the race. He can, he can conduct the race to suit himself. I do think Politolog's the best horse in the race. He probably does come past him, but Gold Present's going to get everything his own way, and he goes incredibly well fresh. Lovely. So. Pace Stewart and DJ Fancy Gold Present. Frank Fancy's Benatar. Let's do the 240. It's the Coral Hurdle. Frank, how do Paddy Power bet? Yeah, if the cap fits, it's 11 to 10. We have a Dream 6 to 4, Old Guard 9 to 2, Raven Black 20s, and we're 33s bar. 
And DJ, you can go first. Yeah, we're, this is where we were hoping to see Lorena Bruce. Unfortunately, the ground isn't soft enough for her. And we're left with probably a substandard renewal of the race when you consider that Annie Power won it and Fahim won it. Um, I'd be pretty sweet and we have a dream uh, reversing the form with if the cap fits. Officially, he's rated £6 higher than if the cap fits. And I think over this trip, that Wincanton form, that's exactly what we have a dream doesn't want. I think that sharp trip around Wincanton, they tried to make plenty of use out of him. It's always, as we know, so hard for a juvenile, for, for a second season juvenile. I thought he acquitted himself quite well. I think this trip is just absolutely perfect for him. I think everything is in his favour here. He's had the run. I think he's a pretty good horse. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up being the best of all the juveniles from last season this year. He's the one, he's, he's a kind of an imposing individual. He's got the scope to really kind of turn into a proper chaser in time. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'd be pretty sweet on him turning around the, the form with if the cap fits. Okay, Frank, who are you sweet on? Uh, it's not a race I have a strong opinion on, but at, at the prices, I'd probably take a chance on Old Guard. He's run a cracker last weekend off a mark of 152 in the Great Wood, finishing third, not beaten far, beaten only three lengths. He was staying on that day. Um, I just think the other two have question marks about them. Like, we have a dream. The four-year-olds, they've been getting run over this year, so I, I wouldn't rate the form. Like, his mark of 156, I'd be surprised if he could run up to it, to be honest. If the cap fits, was beaten two and, what, two and a half lengths by Verdana Blue the last day. He's getting six pounds off Old Guard. Now, when I was looking at the race, even if you're taking the Greatwood form, um, Old Guard finished half length and for, uh, ahead of Verdana Blue, giving her a pound, while she beat If the Cap Fits two and a quarter lengths, getting three pounds or off If the Cap Fits. So basically, I was kind of figuring out that Old Guard was in and around the same ratings-wise through that. And I know you can't take it literal, literally, but... Then Verdana, you look yeah, at the price. got three pounds of if the cap fits, yeah. yeah. So I was kind of saying that maybe Old Guard on that farm was kind of in and around the same as if the cap fits, but yet one's 11 to 10 and one's 9 to 2, and Nichols wouldn't be running him unless he thought he was in a good shape after last week. So at 9 to 2, I'd chance him, but I wouldn't have a strong opinion in the race. I don't think it's a very good race. There was a wry, wryly smile when you said Old oh Guard. Does that chime with what you fancy, Stu? Uh, I mean, I was looking at the race and kind of thinking, God, Old oh Guard's going to win this, and it's going to be one of the worst coral hurdles of all time uh, I managed to talk myself out of it and into if the cat fits um, the form with we have a dream um, they ran at Wincanton two weeks ago he beat we have a dream uh, quite comfortably and obviously I DJ, take the point DJ saying that the Ascot track will, will suit we have a dream more the step up and trip he'll come on for the run all that sort of stuff but if the cat fits ran um, a much better race that day travelled all over him quick and clear of him and the step up in trip I think is going to suit him too. He started his life over hurdles, over two miles, two and a half at Exeter. Like he's, he's always been, that kind of suggests that you're looking at more of a staying prospect than a, a speedy two miler. The fact that he's done what he's done at two miles I kind of think is, uh, has been a bonus as trainers like to say. I think he's a horse that when he steps up in trip will get better and better. He's proven he's got the beating of We Ever Dream. If you go on best prices you can uh, get the same price about if the cap fits as We Ever Dream and he beat him out of sight two weeks ago. I don't, I don't think you have to look too much further. Okay. And the other televised contest at Ascot is easily the most competitive of the three. It's the 315, the Gerald Bertrand Hurst Park Handicap Chase. Two mile, one furlong. Lots of old favourites in the betting. Frank, take it away. Modus is 4 to 1, Ozzy the Oscar 6 to 1, Surname 13 to 2, 1 for Billy 7 to 1, The Enval 9 to 1, Sparadek Duke of Navan and Val Lizer 10 to 1, or 12 is bar. And Frank, you can go first. Yeah, I'll, I'd probably just chance Suriname maybe each way. I don't know if there's a bit bigger out there, but um, he shaped as if he'd come on for the run at, at Carlisle when um, he was very heavily punty. He went off even money in the race that Mr. Whitaker won and Happy Diva was second. Now, um, obviously, Mr. Whitaker run, run, uh, ran quite well last week, finishing fourth, and Happy Diva was travelling quite strongly when brought down four out. So the race might have been quite useful. And um, even if you go back to last year when he was second in the City Isles when he beat a neck by Terra 4, which just his mark of 150 um, is workable. And he is two from two over fences when running over two miles. So, yeah, I thought I'd chance him. Okay, and Stu. Yeah, I like Suriname. I think this race becomes quite interesting because you've got Suriname in there and you've got Speridek, and the two of them are both 
very prone to going off like scolded cats. And if they take each other on as well for the lead, then you're going to get an absolute pace burn up here. The one horse that that would really suit would be John Joe's horse, Champagne at Tara. He likes to come from off the pace. If he's held up and they do go a million miles an hour, the race could fall very well for him. But the horse I just can't get away from in this race is Sam Benedetto. He's a massive price and he's on his best form. He's incredibly well treated off 152. He's a grade one winner in this off 152. He's been running against really good horses and doing himself justice in some very good races. So yeah, I think at the prices, he's the one I'm going to side with. Surname for Frank, Sam Benedetto for Stu. Who for David Jennings? Uh, Sparrow deck, Bruce. Um, I know what, what Stu is staying there. He And Stu loves his tactics. He he really does like his tactics. And I know there's going to be a bit of a pace burn up up front. And, but I just think Sparrow deck, he, that's all he knows. That's all he knows. And I think if something does take him on, so be it. He's just going to do his own thing. Um, he's had a wind up, which I think is key as well. And I go back to that Clarence house run last year against Under So. That was an absolutely incredible run in, on the face of it. Like when you, when you think, like he he had, he had Sam Benedetto miles behind, Kyle Morlock miles behind, Brain Power, my beloved brain, brain Power, obviously fell at the second last that day. But it was a cracking run. And if you go, even his run at the end of last season at uh, Punchestown, he led to the second last in what is always the hottest novice handicap chase of the year. Really good horses have come out of it, like Balco de Flow. Um, Cadmium won it last year at Punchestown. He ran in that race off a mark of 150, and he, but he just rattled along to the second last, and he got a little bit tired in the closing stages. He's won fresh. He won first time out last season over hurdles at Exeter. And I just think if he does get into a rhythm out in front, Ascot really suits him, as we've seen in the Clarence House. And I, I'm just hoping that they won't catch him. So it's a spare deck to make all for me. Thank you, chaps. Right then, there's loads of great action elsewhere away from the ITV cameras. We've got the rest of Haydock, we've got the rest of Ascot, we've got Huntingdon, Garran Park, Lingfield, Wolverhampton, Stu, without giving away your nap. Any other horses you fancy on Saturday? No, I've, uh, I've stuck to the ITV races. Perfect, that's what we like to hear. DJ, I'm sure that won't be the case with you. <clears throat> no, I'll be as quick as I can. Um, I, I, I think Grand Sansi will win again for Paul Nichols and Harry Cobden. He's in the 12-10 at Haydock. Just a real, real improver. And I think it, it, it's a good decision by Paul Nichols to get him out again quickly. I thought I thought he looked a work in progress last week, and I think he'll win again. That's in the 12-10 at Haydock. In the, uh, if I get up to 12 uh, 40 at, at Haydock. Really interesting race. Um, Bishop's Road obviously loves uh, Haydock. But I, the one that I was interested in here was Sam Red for Dan Skelton and, and Harry Skelton. It's rate 122. I think it could have more to offer um, off 122. That's Sam Red in the 12.40. And moving on to Gorham Park. Really, really interesting card at Gorham Park. And the one I like is in the... 110, yeah, sorry, the 110. It is the uh, Labrooks Novice Hurdle. Sorry, are we allowed to mention Labrooks? We'll just go with the Novice are. Hurdle. Yeah, the one I like is called Buttons and Bows for uh, Pat Flynn and uh, J.P. J. Manus has bought it. Uh, I thought it was very impressive winning a 24 runner uh, maiden hurdle at Cork last time. Um, and it beat a, a odds on shot of Gordon Elliott's. I thought that had a big chance, but probably the, the first in Haydock would be my strongest fancy of them, Paul Nichols's. Thank you, DJ. And Frank, who's in your roundup? Yeah, um, we'll start at Gore in the 12.35. This is one to more keep an eye on the market. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Henry de Bram had introduced a nice mare called Honeysuckle, and she was backed as if defeat was out of the question at Fairy House, and she duly delivered. She was very impressive. Now, the same connections have a horse called Sinoria, who cost 130 sterling. Um, she won a point impressively enough, and I just keep an eye. It's not the strongest ever looking um, maiden hurdle and just be keeping an eye in the market there she might be useful enough um, over at Ascot the 12.55 the 3 mile handicap chase uh, uh, be interested to see um, Cresswell Legend um, quite a useful handicap hurdler um, he won um he won up in Musbra off a mark of 127 last year he on the face of it you might have been a little bit disappointed with his t with his um two chase runs he was beaten at Perth over two and a half miles but he was beaten by Cuba Mania and next that day Cuba Mania ended up going to Cheltenham and winning uh, the second day he ran the handicap off mark 132 against a horse called Drover's Lane now Drover's Lane went to Aintree the next time and was travelling really strongly when he made an error I think three out that put paid to his chances there but he absolutely bolted up off seven pounds higher at market raising yesterday so he's probably going to go up another 
possibly even ten pounds. So it was probably a very difficult task he had that day to run against him. He's off the same mark for hundred and thirty two. I thought he'd have a solid each way chance. And one of the potentially very big price in the one thirty at Ascot, Jube Olympics for Seamus Mullins, um uh, in the mayor's handicap hurdle over two miles five and a half a furlong um she was third in that big newbury handicap for the mayors behind roxana um running on really strongly that day she got, got outpaced down the hill at cheltenham then in april and ran on really strongly there both of those over two miles four the extra furlong and a half will really suit her and i thought barry garrity being booked uh, really caught the eye there um i thought she could be a bit of a price and was worth chancing each way and in the 12.40 Haylock, Bishop's Road, can't get away from I think. Um, since 2011, there's been seven rules of the race. Three horses carried 11 stone 12, and two have carried 11 stone 11 to victory. Bishop's Road's a class act in the race. He carries top weight. Um, to me, it looks a weak enough renewal. He's had two runs at Haylock. Um, he won a Grand National trial off 144 very easily a, a few years back, and he was third to Peter Marsh with Bristol Demoy hacked up. That was off a mark of 149. He's running here off 135, and Richard Johnson's booked. I think he will be difficult to beat. Let's get the naps. This will not be beaten. Stuart Riley. In the uh, 335 at Haydock, my nap is Vintage Clouds. David Jennings. Bruce, I'm really, really sorry about this, but I cannot even start to contemplate the fee for my bite. So my bite in the three o'clock at Haydock. Frank Hickey. It's got to be 150 Haydock, Mr. Antolini. You having a big smash up on this, uh, Frank, do you think? I will have to, like as in, I'll be honest, I had it for the price of a nice car um, last week. So if I don't have a right cut, like were he to go in and I only had a small bet on him, I would be as sick as David Jennings was last Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. That. Thank you, chaps. Let's do Sunday next. Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer 30 days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer 10 questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com. Hi there, Bruce Millington, Stuart Riley, David Jennings and Paddy Powers. Frank Hickey looking ahead to Sunday and all roads lead to Navan, where the highlight of the day is is the 2.30, it's the Labrooks Troy Town handicap chase, an absolute sea of maroon, there's about a million Giggins Town runners, so many in fact, they'll probably have to invent some new colours for the various caps that they will be wearing. And I'm sure as well the Gordon Elliott runners dominate the betting, Frank, take it away. Yam Nilabo is 13 to 2, Spider's Web 8 to 1, Outsam 10 to 1 on Squator and 2 A per me. Uh, Arkwish 12 to 1, Rogue Angel 12 to 1, General Principal and Woodswell are both 14 to 1 and we're 16s bar. David, have you spent long trying to suss the winner of this one? Uh, uh, most of the last week, Bruce, to be honest with you, this is one of my favourite races of the year um, as I have uh, grown up with it all my life and uh, I actually tipped a horse in the paper today, which is not running, which is a bit of a nightmare because I thought Velocity Boy was a huge price of 20 to 1. But I was between two all week and I couldn't decide which one to tip. And the fact that Velocity Boy is not running, I'm absolutely thrilled with now because uh, I like one of the 16 to 1 bar ones that Frank didn't mention there. And that is Dunacus uh, from the Gordon Elliott stable. And um, you look at his form and you'll see PPP and you'll say Jennings is talking shite again, which I'm sure people will say is true. But Dunacos is virgin on grade one class over fences. OK, he's rated 150 and he fully, fully deserves that mark, if not a little bit more. Go back to his form. He won the, the grade two novice chase at Limerick last year at Christmas. Um, album photo fell at the last that day but Dunacus probably did have his measure he went on to run in the grade one at Leperstown, probably the hottest novice chase of the year in Ireland uh, the flow gas novice chase, it was won by Mon Lee album photo was second, invitation only was third, Snow Falcon was fifth, Tombstone was in it, the storyteller who won at Cheltenham was seventh, Bon Papa, Sutton Place it was a cracking race, Dunacus was beaten a length and three quarters that day in a proper grade one, now his form went a bit awry after that but the fact of the matter now is that he's still off a mark of 150. They think he's virgin of grade one class. He's booked a seven-pound claimer in Liam McKenna, who is very, very good. I did Gordon Stable tour with him, and we mentioned the Tritown, a race he loves to win. This was the first horse he mentioned to me about the Tritown was Dunacus. I think they think he's well handicapped. He's won first time out for the last two seasons in a row. I know he is top weight, but he is top weight for a reason, and I think Dunacus can give Gordon Elliott his fifth straight win in the Troy Town Chase. He's 16-1 to now. There's no way he'll be 16-1 to on the day. Well played, DJ. That was excellent. I really did get completely won over there. Frank, can you sway me away from Dunacus now? 
No, it's a strong case David's made. The two that kind of caught my eye a little bit, one was at two a per me um, for Noel Mead. Um, he's only had the one run for Noel. He was with Mouse Morris. Um, if you go back far enough, he was a decent... Like on his chase debut last September, he hammered Berlad. Um kind of form tailed off then but on his f- there is the worry he's just best fresh but he was a very impressive winner at a handicap at Galway there um, a few weeks ago and um, he won very easy now it was a bad enough race he's got £10 for that but he is only a 5 year old he's open to any amount of improvement I thought he'd have an each way chance and just one at a price and look it's he's a 10 year old and he's not going to be improving but mine now won a pretense qualifier at Leperstown at Christmas beating a great view and he did that off a mark of 135 he was third in a the Blazers at Galway in August behind Snugs were Benny and a Rage were probably the two other really well handicapped horse in the race off a mark of 125 he gets in here off 128 I've no doubt he's well handicapped and um He's a decent each way price as well. I'd give him a squeak, but it's not a race I have a massive opinion on. Cool, you could have fooled me. There's loads of opinions there. Stuart, what's your opinion? Uh, the horse that caught my eye in here was uh, another of Gordon Elliott's, was Ned Stark. He was a horse that was with Alan King um, previously, and he's been one of those horses. He's been uh, spent more time off the track than on it. He's had a few injuries. He's been a long time between drinks several times in his career, and... He's always hinted at having a huge amount of ability. The fact that he's moved to Gordon Elliott uh, is promising because he's not going to pick up a a washed up old thing from Alan Kings unless he thinks he can do something special with it. The fact that he's got him in here is also interesting. He's a big price and uh, and yeah, he's a horse that, I, I mean, I've I've followed him to the well a few times and uh, he's, he's he's been a frustrating horse to follow, but I can't let him go unbacked here because uh, the... the there's an awful lot there that catches your eye with uh, with with Gordon taking on the uh, the challenge of trying to get a win out of him and and yeah I will uh, I'll be having a few quid on him. Lovely, plenty of food for thought there on the big race. Anything on the Nav and undercard you like, DJ? Oh, Bruce, I <laughs> I think I'm going to try and go through the card here. Okay, uh, in the first race, Deffy Blue finished second to brace yourself in a really good maiden hurdle at Down Royal. I think Deffy Blue will win the first. Um, Gypsy Island is likely to be all the rage in the 12.30. But you know what? She might just be a shorter price than she do- she should because J.P. McManus has bought her. And I thought put the kettle on, ran an absolute sledger. When Very aptly named because I think me and Stu probably can put the kettle on by the time you've finished. But go on, <laughs> crack on. <laughs> All right, that was nice. I like that, Bruce. Uh, yeah, put the kettle on with second to Mr. Blue Sky, who Willie Mullins thinks the world of. And I think put the kettle on might be a little bit of value against Gypsy Island. In the one o'clock, the Monksfield, the Grade 3 novice hurdle, I'm going to give Felix De Jay another chance because I think he's misunderstood. I think he's, because he's keen, we think he's a speed horse. I think he's a stayer. The step up and trip might enable him to jump a little bit better. In the 130, Warnack, number 13 for Matthew Smith and Andrew Lynch, rated 88 on the flat, is 103 over hurdles. He has to be thrown in off that mark my anti-post racing post Arkel fancy runs in the two o'clock that is paloma blue trained by henry de bromhead apparently schooling has gone brilliantly so paloma blue in the two o'clock dunicus as i said already in the 230 in the three o'clock the name escapes me was very very impressive at nace last time i don't think the handicappers caught up with him in the 330 the list at mayor's bumper yukon lil i think can win again for willie mullins and richie deegan there you well, go that's brilliant gone through the card in about a minute great job frank who else do you like at nevin yeah, the ones that caught my eye, Gypsy Island, um, Peter Fahey, David's uh, talked about her already, um, look, the day she ran her bumper at Robe, we weren't long finding out that the price was too big, we got absolutely smashed that on that, and uh, she won really easy, I think she probably would be hard to beat, Pl- interesting to see how Paloma Blue gets on, um, he needs to be good though to be more impressive than Lawler, who won at Cheltenham last week, uh, I don't think I've been as impressed by a novice first time out as I was by him. Um, it's shaping up into a good race this year, isn't it, Frank? Potentially. Um, what did potentially you think Kalashnikov? Uh, I thought Kalashnikov was satisfactory. He didn't blow your mind away. Um, but I'm a massive fan of Kalashnikov, but I backed Lawler after his run on Sunday. Uh, did I think look good, didn't he? For a horse to do that first time out, there's not that many. I know some of the time boys were crabby, but sometimes you got to believe your eyes. And his jumping and travelling, he could have won by further if he wanted to. Um, he could have went faster if you wanted to. He's a grade two bumper winner. He's a grade one hurdle winner. And he looks like he's a better chaser. Um, mm. I was very impressed with him. But anyway, back Plum and Booby to see how he gets on. And I agree with um, Paul on the, um, or with David on the handicap hurdler. Um, 
the name's just gone for me. The name escapes me. <laughs> I would do that on purpose. Um, he was really well handicapped. Uh, he, he run really well at, at Nays, and I'd say he'll take a lot of beating. Okay, well done, chaps. Um, now, elsewhere in Britain on Sunday, we've got Exeter and Utoxeter. Stu, I don't know if you've managed to, to pick a winner, but there's certainly a horse we should be looking at down at Exeter, isn't there? Good old Lil Rockefeller. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's... Uh, he's Taken to chasing better than better than I thought he would. There's actually the horse that I fancy at Exeter is uh, against him. Is another one of those horses that um, drummed up quite a following uh, two seasons ago. Uh, to be fair, if you remember him, went on quite the sequence. Um, then went to the per temps, didn't quite deliver on the day, uh, but ran a great race. Um, last season was a bit of a write-off. He came back this season. I think he started off over hurdles. They'd always wanted to go chasing with him. Great big chasing type. Of the two of them, him and Little Rockefeller, you'd have always said he'd have taken to chasing better than Little Rockefeller. The fact that Little Rockefeller's done so well um, obviously is encouraging, but yeah, I would I would look to take him on with, uh, with To Be Fair, who's a, a, a great big hulk of a horse. and uh, should, he be should be a good be, race, actually, shouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. It should be a cracking race. 220 at Exeter on Sunday. Now then, just to piss off all the people who say that the build-up to Cheltenham starts too early, I want to get a, Cheltenham, a fresh Cheltenham thought from either, each of you before we go. DJ? Oh, oh, uh, does it have to have ran so far this season, yeah? Well, yeah, yeah. Just give me a... Um, you're always thinking about Cheltenham. You dream of nothing else apart yeah. from, obviously, the lovely Aoife. Um, so what have you come yeah. up with this week? What's come into your radar for the festival? OK, well, I would advise people to back Paloma Blue for the article before he runs on Sunday. Um, other than that, um, I was blown away by Malone Road, who won the bumper at Punchestown last Sunday. It just looked a spectacular performance. Now, I did a, a National Hunt season preview with Gordon Elliott, and he seemed to think that there was potentially two or three as good, if not better, than Malone Road. Now, I, I have a feeling that he's changed his mind after that, and we all know that one of them is Envoy Allen, who was, who was purchased for huge money, so that'll be interesting. And it's the first straight to, to the festival anybody, of the year, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, straight to the festival. You know it runs in the race, you know he's good, you know he handles uh, uh, good ground. And the key thing about uh, Malone Road is that um, he's he's not overly big, like he's a nice he, he's kind of nicely shaped horse, and I think he'll suit the hurly burly of the the champion bumper. So that's why they're keen to go there. He's been brilliant, as you know, Bruce. Uh, you seen him first time out as well. He looked very very good. Mm. If I was to advise anybody to have an anti post fan uh, t uh, bet at Cheltenham before a horse runs, I would advise them to back top of the game for the RSA. Top of the game for the RSA, right then. So uh, Frank, you've already given the big G up to Lawler. Who else do you like for Cheltenham? I had one other bet, anti-post bet, so I had two anti-post bets for Cheltenham, and the other one was midway through the slower chase, um, nicking a bit of a price on Soreal. Now, Altor is obviously going to be terribly difficult to beat, but anything can happen in racing, you know, were he not to turn up. If you look at the way Soreal jumps, there are very few horses are as quick over a fence as him. He's unbelievable. Um, and while people were knocking the form saying, oh, he's only beaten Simply Ned two and a half lengths, you only have to remember that Simply Ned would have beaten Min at Leopardstown at Christmas, only for getting the interference. So he got it in the stewards room, but he would have beaten him that day. Like, he's not a bad mark at all. And the way Soreal jumps, and the likelihood of getting a strong praise with the likes of St. Calvados in the race, and maybe others later on in the year, it'll really suit him. And I think he'll be ridden to kind of pick up the pieces in these big races and... He excites me. He so excites me a lot. Nicked a little each way, did you, Frank, or did you go uh, win only? Normally I'd go win only, but just with the way, way Altior is, I backed him each way um, at a price. for the champion chase these days? Uh, I think it's about ranging between 10 and 14 the last time I checked. He was 25s um, halfway through the race. I was like, there's no point in waiting until the end here. He's going to win. Okay, um, okay. Very sure. Um, but they would be the two that have really caught my eye. Obviously Malone Road as well, but would... Like, my reason for going on Lawler would be the Arkle tends to cut up and you could gen be looking at six or seven running. The bumper, you will get 20 runners and we haven't seen half of them yet. So it wouldn't entice me in yet, although he does look a superstar. OK, and Stu, I guess you're trying to work out what day it is, never mind what's going to win at Cheltenham. Yeah. Everyone only just touched down from the other side of the world. Yeah, you've thrown a bit of a curveball at me. That's fine. I'll tell you uh, what, in that case, no, no, Stu, I've, unless you've got I've, one. I've come up with a, a thought while, uh, okay. while DJ bought me some time with his, <laughs> uh, with his ramblings. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the, the thought that I've come up, to, come up with is, uh, is this. I don't think Thistlecrack is going to uh, do it on Saturday. I think the Tizards are going to discover they have a bona fide superstar in Native River. And I think that the, uh, the former Steyr's Hurdle winner could be, uh, 
could be quick to be switched back Putting to back hurdles. Over and the smaller obstacles. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, if that were to happen, it's a um, it's a, a weak enough division. Fantastic. He'd uh, he'd he'd half in price pretty quickly, even if he doesn't run too well on Saturday. So I might uh, seek out a price on him. I like your style there, Stu. Well done now, Stu. Obviously, you're just getting your head back together, coming back from Australia, washing the underwear and doing all those household chores and getting rid of all the pizza leaflets that have piled up. So what does the weekend hold? Uh, I am working. So uh, I should think. Yeah, absolutely. around in Australia for a month. <laughs> so you're working both days, yeah? I, I'm working Saturday. I've got a friend's 30, 31st birthday. Him and his wife are having a joint birthday party. So what's the highlight night. in Australia? Winks or the Melbourne Cup? Oh, Winks. Yeah. She's an absolute superstar. I bet yeah, that the must atmosphere right she buzz creates being there, wasn't is incredible. It? Yeah, you, there's forty thousand people there to see one horse in one race. Eighty-five to ninety percent of the crowd were dressed in blue and white, and the place went nuts. Brilliant. She walked out from under the grandstand. They come through the grandstand out onto the track, and when she appeared, it was like the start of the Supreme Novices, the roar that went Fab. up. Brilliant, yeah. DJ. You know all about that. I haven't been there the year before, don't you? Uh -huh. Yeah, I'd love to go back. Amazing, best trip in the world. And I presume after your stag weekend, you've got to get your head down now and do all sorts of household chores, have you? Yeah, do you know what I have to do in the morning, actually? They're probably one of the worst jobs for a wedding, the mask booklet. You have to get everything to fit into this little booklet and so people can read the mask. And uh, so I have to go through that in the morning. How long does the mask well last tomorrow. for, DJ? Uh, about an hour and 15 minutes. Is it? <laughs> it's going to take yeah. a long yeah. Everyone in the church, though, isn't well, it? It is, yeah. He's got yeah. some guest list. Oh, he's yeah. got some guest list. He's, he has got some guest list, haven't you, DJ? Because the postman I delivered have. in style this week. I've got to say, thank you very much indeed, What DJ. did you think of the invitations? Did I you absolutely like them? loved them. They were beautiful, mate. Yes. No, thank you very yeah. much indeed for that, my friend. Very exciting. Um, so you're just going to get your head down, sort the mass out, and then go punting, yeah? Uh, oh yeah, I'm working Saturday and then Sunday I am obviously working in Navin, yeah, so n nice weekend to look forward to. Brilliant, and Frank, what, are the, what does the weekend hold for you, my friend? Uh, I'm working all weekend, so it'll be quite enough for me. Yeah, and punting as well, yeah? Well, um, I think the weekend's mood will be dictated by Mr. Antolini. <laughs> okay, well, good luck there. And Frank, I was going to ask you for a Labrick Trophy tip, because I assumed you wouldn't be on next week, because you're on so sparingly these days, but you've got, you're making a quick seasonal reappearance next week, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, a bit like first assignment. I'm probably not the most robust, but I'm going to chance it next week. And, and you uh, tell me that you love the Labrick Trophy, one of your favourite races of the year, yeah? I adore it. It's one of my favourite races. Um, I think it's brilliant and I can't wait. And without giving away the horse, have you got your eye on one just yet? Uh, it will be probably dependent on what happens rain-wise. Um, between now and Saturday. I don't think there's too much forecast, which would... I had one in mind since last year, but... She needs softer ground. OK, let's hope for some rain. So we'll be back next week looking ahead to the Labrick Trophy and, of course, the Fighting Fifth and all the other racing. But in the meantime, loads more great postcards. Maddie and the gang are back on Monday to look back on this great weekend, looking ahead to what's coming up next weekend. Steve Palmer and Ian McLaughlin back for another golf postcast on Wednesday. And then all the footy boys on Thursday with all the best weekend bets. So if you can't join us for them, Please do come back next Friday when we'll be looking ahead to the Labrook Trophy. Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer 30 days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer 10 questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com.